Top 10 Trades in Bill's History is presented by Aesthetic Associates. One great look is worth a thousand words. Deep drop is going to be sacked back at the 14-yard line. Simpson running left. Simpson breaking loose. And there it is. Bring it up. One, two, three. One, two, three. A transaction, a swap, an exchange. Trades in the NFL can take on many different shapes and sizes. But each have the ability to sculpt a franchise for years to come. The Bills win it in overtime! Undisclosed amounts, parades, franchise tags, the deal of the decade. For the next half hour, all embargoes have been lifted. These are the top 10 trades in Bills history. The blitz is on with linebacker Harry Jacobs set to rush Tom Flores. But the baby-faced assassin storms through, spilling Flores for a 12-yard loss. Number 10, an undisclosed exchange. Even back in 1963, cash was king. As head coach Lou Saban convinced ownership to send an undisclosed amount of money to the Boston Patriots in exchange for fourth-year linebacker Harry Jacobs. Extremely competitive. A fierce competitor. Harry was a, a very good uh, collegiate wrestler, so he had the ability to fend off blocking. Now watch Harry Jacobs. He's got it, and the Bills continue to lead. He was a very aggressive ball player and everything. He was one of those rah-rah guys, and, you know, always patting you on the butt and say, hey, do a good job, do this, do that, you know. He was always trying to be a leader. He was a force of stability on the team, not just in the locker room. On the field, in the team, you know, he was an emotional player but he was always in control. And he controlled the defense, that was his job. He was the quarterback on defense, and they respected him. Jacobs made history in Buffalo, along with John Tracy and Mike Stratton. Together, the three started 62 straight games at linebacker from 1963 to 1967, a pro football record. They instinctively knew each other's moves, so Harry was able to uh, make those adjustments, and that's why uh, our defense got us into uh, two championships and won those championships. Well, the streak that those three had, you know, it, it was something different in the sense of Buffalo was different in, in the AFL even. They were a blue collar team and I think blue collar was code for they were a defensive team. In the 64-65 uh, championship years, I think there were 17 consecutive games. The defense did not permit a rushing touchdown. I mean, that's, that's incredible. A lot of that, most of it's probably due to uh, Harry. During seven years of signal calling for the Buffalo defense, Jacobs registered 12 interceptions, was a two-time All-Star, and back-to-back -back AFL champion. The type of ball player that he was, um, that in today's market, he would be one of the top paid ball players. Number nine, from short foam to mainstay. In the second round of the 1976 NFL Draft, the Bills used the 52nd overall pick on offensive lineman Joe Devlin, a selection they had acquired from the St. Louis Cardinals in a trade for former first overall pick, Walt Potolsky. When Walt came to Buffalo, it was a first round pick out of Notre Dame. There was, I mean, that was big news. Everybody expected great things from Walt, and it just didn't happen. To get Joe Devlin as a result of that trade was pretty much a steal. Aside from not playing in 1983, the six foot five, 265 pound Devlin was a mainstay on the Bills O-line for 13 seasons. Joe Devlin was, to me, like a prototypical uh, offensive lineman in the 70s and 80s. You know, he was, he was quiet, he was big, and he was strong, and uh, he worked hard. He was intimidating, very intimidating. Um, man, every time we put on the pads or whatever, you know, he was out there doing what he needed to do to get by, to survive. And, uh, and you just felt bad for the other player that was going against him. Joe was a scrapper. Um, I got a chance to, to learn a lot and watch how to be a pro from not only Ben Williams, but, but Joe D as well. Particularly in his later years in, in his career, he became like Kyle Williams is now with the Bills. He became that locker room leader, the one consistent guy on that line that you could look to and say, you know, we got Joe Devlin at least. He'd know his assignments, do his job, do his job in, in a really uh, good way. I mean, he was a good, good player. And you didn't worry about him. You always knew that that position, that tackle spot was solid when Joe Devlin was lining up and playing. During his career, Devlin helped pave the way for 1,000-yard rushers Terry Miller, Joe Cribbs, 
Greg Bell, and Thurman Thomas. And a run by Thurman Thomas to the right, cutting back, driving through, breaking a tackle, still on his feet at the 20, at the 15, down to the 10-yard line, breaking down to the 5, and in for the touchdown! Certainly, as history looks back at it, it's one of those great trades that uh, paid dividends for 14 years. Greg Bell has gone all the way on the very first play from scrimmage. Number eight, back to Bell. In a swapping of 1984 draft picks, the Bills elected to move back from 14 to 26, while also picking up a pair of additional third round picks from Miami. With that 26th pick, the Bills grabbed the first running back off the board, Notre Dame's Greg Bell. I think when he came to Buffalo, we were all looking for the next O.J. Simpson. So Greg Bell had a tough job, you know, and when he got there, he rushed for a thousand yards and, you know, twice. Uh, right away and everybody's thinking, well, you know, he may not be OJ, but he's awfully darn good. He was fast and elusive and um, I think he had good vision. His most memorable play was the opening play against the Cowboys, right, in 1984. First down for the Bills in the eye formation and a handoff and up the middle and breaking out to the 30 is Greg Bell and Bell is on his way to the 40, to the 30. Greg Bell scores a touchdown on an 85-yard run on the first play from scrimmage. It was uh, kind of his calling card. He made that play and it was kind of like, oh, that's who that guy is now. Unfortunately for Bell, he's often remembered more for his exit as part of a blockbuster trade that we'll revisit later on. When they described that trade and they were saying, and they threw in Greg Bell. They threw in a guy that rushed for, you know, over a thousand yards two years in a row, but the player they got in return and part of that deal was just a phenomenal player. That and more are up next as we reach the top seven. We'll highlight some deals that even took the players involved by surprise, as well as some trades involving current players who are still building their Bills legacy. The Top 10 Trades in Bills History is presented by Aesthetic Associates. One great look is worth a thousand words. Number seven, Shep and Jerry. The first player for player exchange on our list comes courtesy of an April 2013 deal that sent linebacker Calvin Shepard to Indianapolis in return for their 2010 first round pick, defensive end Jerry Hughes. A shocking moment, really just caught off guard for the most part, really just trying to process everything as I'm collecting all my things and getting on the uh, next flight to Buffalo. Now the Jerry Hughes trade is much more of a look back on it and talk about how great it was, but at the time it was just guy for guy. Jerry's drafted in the first round, um, oh, he's a first-round guy, he's not really playing, but I'm like, who's going to play? The guy was playing behind Robert Mathis and Dwight Freeman. I mean, two guys that may both get into the Hall of Fame. Now he comes here, goes into a starring role, and gets you double-digit sacks. Brought down back at the 23-yard line, they sack him. Jerry Hughes brings him down. Deep drop, he is going to be sacked. Back at the 14-yard line, Jerry Hughes, sack number five. He is sacked by Jerry Hughes back at the 41-yard line. He came in and fit right in. A guy that every day when you got an opportunity to watch him work, I mean, did it the right way. Then obviously you see his production on the field and what he can do. Uh, he was a great get for us. When he stepped on the field for the Bills, it was like he was shot out of the tent. <laughs> Didn't matter if the Bills were up 20 points, down 20 points, first quarter, fourth quarter, the guy was bringing it every single snap. Pressured ball comes out, loose ball rolling around at the 40 yard line. Jerry Hughes comes up with the football. Jerry Hughes runs it into the end zone for the touchdown. Since arriving in Buffalo, Hughes' career has taken off totaling 36 sacks and forcing eight fumbles in his first four seasons. Stats that are only going to keep climbing in 2018 and beyond. They won that trade, and, and uh, certainly when you get first-round talent, I think that's what you think. If we're going just on, like, return for what you spent, I mean, the Hughes trade for Calvin Shepard has got to be near the top. Number six, first-round price tag. In early 2003, with wide receiver Peerless Price set to hit the open market, Bills GM Tom Donahoe masterfully worked the system in order to fill a void in the upcoming draft. The Bills had traded away 
their first round pick in 2003 to New England to get Drew Bledsoe. We said, is there any way we could think of something and, and the obvious way was fearless. We knew we couldn't keep it. So you hate to have somebody who's an asset and just let them walk away. And we knew we could buy some time with the franchise tag on them. At that point, he decided, I'm going to try to set up a sign and trade deal. Atlanta had the most interest. And I told him at the beginning, I said, look, you tell us the terms that uh, you can live with. We'll take the tag off, sign him, and then make the trade. It gets done, and the Bills get a first round pick in return, which wound up being number 23 in round one that very spring. Let's see if the Bills gambled. You know what? Why not? With the uh, 23rd selection in the 2003 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Willis McGahee, running back, University of Miami. Drew Rosenhaus, his agent, stages this elaborate pro day with McGahee like three months removed from ACL, LCL, and PCL surgery, and he's got him jogging out there. And so Rosenhaus got just the buzz that he wanted one of the most electrifying players I've ever watched in college. Absolutely incredible. Speed, ability to make guys miss. If McGee, he doesn't blow out his knee and threaten to miss the whole year because of that, he goes third, he goes second. He was just an absolute force on the field. It was a roll of the dice, and he turned out to be a pretty good player. McGahee's debut season resulted in a career-high 13 rushing touchdowns and the PFWA Comeback Player of the Year award. Touchdown, an 11-yard run for Willis McGahee. The Bills take a gamble, and it pays off big time. The kid McGahee going to go wide, right side, into the end zone. Touchdown, Willis McGahee. Despite only playing three seasons in the red, white, and blue, McGahee is seventh on the list of top 10 all-time leading Bills rushers. Number five, electricity in the air. After leading the team in touchdown catches for three straight seasons, the Bills chose to ship wide receiver Marlon Briscoe to Miami following the 1971 season. In exchange, Buffalo received a first rounder the following year, which they used to select a guard out of Michigan State by the name of Joe DeLamalure. That trade was building around OJ, like, hey, we got this really good running back, let's build up our offensive line and, and set him loose, and that's exactly what happened. Simpson running left, Simpson breaking loose, and there it is! He's doing all right, all right! You got a back who's setting records and running for 2,000 yards, the offensive line's going well, and Joe D was a big part of that, right, in his rookie year. How many times do you have an offensive line with a nickname? I mean, not very often. But it was really Joe was the leader on that offensive line, but would never have to say it. Didn't talk a lot, but he performed. And uh, when it came to uh, dissecting a play, uh, he was great at it. Probably the best pass blocker that, that I've ever seen. He was a little squatty guy, and he would get you, and he would get in your ear, you know, I don't care who you were, you were getting away from him. Not a huge man. He would look totally out of place in today's game in the middle of an offensive line, but back then, he was solid and he could run all day long. I mean, a great athlete. Joe D went on to be one of the most decorated Bills of all time, with a career that featured five Pro Bowls, five All Pro selections, a spot on the NFL 1970s All Decade team, and a Hall of Fame induction. My wife always said, You hit the perfect place, perfect time, perfect coaches. And she said, Then you end up in the Hall of Fame. When we come back, find out which trade warranted a full blown parade and how a Bills legend was acquired for a man that never played a down for Buffalo. See how they stack up when we continue on with our list of top 10 trades in Bills history. Tom Donahoe, our general manager, walks by me and he looks at me and he goes, are you ready? And walks away. A few minutes later, he comes up to me and he goes, are you ready? Number four, Donahoe draft splash. Donahoe indeed called this shot as the Bills made a huge splash during the 2002 draft. Tom Donahoe at the time, he's drafting fourth overall, and at one point they're asking about quarterback, and he says, stay tuned. Word comes that they're trying to trade for Drew Bledsoe. They were adamant about the first. We were adamant about not giving the first. We just both sort of dug our heels in, kept saying no, no, no. We didn't think at the end we were giving up too much with a first round pick to get a starting established quarterback who who had played at a Pro Bowl level 
Donahoe basically agrees, we're going to give you our one in 2003 for Bledsoe and the trade stuff. It was remarkable. I'll never forget when Bledsoe came to uh, Buffalo for the first time. There was like a rally at the stadium. He threw footballs to people. And I think it was universally taken as a good move. Well, let me just start by saying that I'm proud to be a part of the Buffalo Bills organization. When you have a rally just for a player trade, I think you've, uh, you've created quite a buzz. All I want is everything you got for as long as it takes. Play with confidence. We'll win the game. Bring it up. Win on three. Win on three. One, two, three. In his first season with the Bills, Bledsoe came out guns blazing throwing for a franchise record 4,359 yards, 24 touchdowns, and earning himself a trip to the Pro Bowl. It put the fan base on notice. We thought, oh my God, there's a real quarterback. We have a real passing game. By going out and trading and making a big trade, you get a former first overall pick. He added validity and, and a sense of, yeah, we're contenders in the NFL too here in Buffalo. Bledsoe managed to throw for over 10,000 yards and 55 touchdowns during his three-year tenure. Ranking it where it was, when it was made, to me, created a big buzz around here, and, and that's why I would put it high on the list. Shady, this is not a joke. The Eagles have traded you to the Buffalo Bills. I'm like, I'm like, what? Number three, the real McCoy. On March 10th of 2015, GM Doug Whaley and the Buffalo Bills made arguably the most notable transaction in recent memory. Pico, while he came on, a gangbusters, and we had the legend of Pico, and everybody fell in love with him. He was coming off his second career ACL knee injury, and we're flipping him for a three or four time Pro Bowl running back? What did the Bills do to make this happen? And then we find out later, the Eagles called the Bills. In terms of what you gave up and what you got back, it's a great, it's very one-sided. It's one of the best trades in the history of the franchise. Immediately upon donning the charging Buffalo, McCoy provided a jolt in the backfield that had both fans and teammates buzzing. It's a boost in the locker room. It's a boost for the organization. You know what you're getting. You're getting a primetime player. One of the most entertaining Bills to watch because of how he can make guys look so bad. In his first three seasons in Buffalo, LaShawn has averaged 1,100 yards on the ground, registered 27 touchdowns, made three Pro Bowls, and became the 30th player ever to rush for over 10,000 career yards. Albeit not apparent on the field, the transition to Buffalo wasn't the easiest. I was hurt. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to get traded. It's a business and things happen. Control what you control, and that's play football, you know, buy into the program, you know, and be a baller, and that's it. Number two, 14 becomes 12. In the wake of three years in the CFL that featured two failed attempts at signing the first overall pick in 1979, the Bills finally decided to cut ties with linebacker Tom Cousineau by trading him to Cleveland in 1982. They received the 14th pick in 1983, where they selected a quarterback out of the University of Miami that was less than enthused about the idea of playing in Buffalo. I cried. I didn't literally cry, but I had tears in my heart saying, no way. The thing with Jim Kelly is that Buffalo fans have been through it with Tom Cousineau. Going 0 for 2, it, it kind of gave the Bills fans the feeling like, can't we get it right? For a while, it was almost as if Buffalo fans like gave up. Like, well, we drafted him, we'll probably never see him. Obviously, they have been looking for a quarterback for a number of years, and Marvel even Bill Polian did an excellent job of convincing him. We began to talk football and there was a bond there. Ultimately, Jim was convinced that it was the right place for him, so he came back over and told his agents, hey, get this deal done. Jim came to Buffalo, and 
the sun shone on the franchise for the first time in a long time. In Buffalo, we love Jim Kelly! I've never seen anything like it before or since in terms of the immediate impact and the immediate expectation level that came with him. The swagger, the bravado, the toughness. He had everything. He had everything you would want in a central casting quarterback for the Buffalo Bills. I'm glad he got his butt on the plane. Bill Polin and everybody talked it out to get his butt up here. So, I mean, he's always my number 12, but he's always my number one. While maestro of the no-huddle offense, Kelly earned five Pro Bowl honors three All-Pro nominations, led the Bills to four straight AFC championships, a Hall of Fame induction, and became the first Bill to have his number retired by the franchise. The piece that finally put it all in place. Coming up, we journey back to 1987 to highlight what the New York Times deemed the deal of the decade. Our chart-topping trade revealed when we return. the piece that finally put it all in place. It was like only a few deals like that ever in the history of the NFL. Certainly, it was the greatest trade in, in Buffalo Bills history. That thing was, I mean, everything changed. Out of the shotgun, <laughs> dropping back, pressure, and he is sacked, he loses the ball. Let's see, it is picked up by the Bills and run in for a touchdown by Cornelius Bennett. How do you like that? Number one, the deal of the decade. I called Mr. Wilson and I said, uh, I really think we should pursue this, but it's going to be costly. And typical of Mr. Wilson, he said, is this guy really as good as I'm reading? I said, yes, he is. And he said, okay, go ahead. I went to Marv and he wasn't thrilled about it. We uh, went back and forth for an hour and a half and finally he wore me out and said, all right, go ahead. It was the greatest loss I've ever experienced. We played two games were on strike for four games, and then he made another two games. So it was like eight games into the year when we made the trade. Halloween of 1987, the LA Rams, Colts, and Bills teamed up for a 10-man swap, dubbed the deal of the decade that sent Eric Dickerson to Indy, a package of six draft picks and two players that included running back Greg Bell to LA, and the rights to the second overall pick that year, Cornelius Bennett to Buffalo. So he comes in, when he steps on the practice field, like, <laughs> We won the trade. Frank Reich looks at me, he goes, bro, look at that. You know, we're gonna be really good. Bennett managed to rack up eight and a half sacks and five forced fumbles in the remaining eight games. Over the course of an accolade-filled nine seasons with the Bills, Cornelius notched five Pro Bowls three first-team All-Pro nominations, two AFC Defensive Player of the Year awards, and was named to the NFL 90s All-Decade Team, leading most to believe the Bills won the trade. That's the one that really propelled us, and finally we were the full team that we needed to be at that time. The whole course of the franchise was changed by that. As far as, you know, looking at it in a historical context beyond just Buffalo, it is up there because not just of the sheer number of players that were involved, but who was involved. Dickerson had uh, some productive years at the Colts, but, you know, running backs can't keep that going. Bell was just okay. Yeah, the Bills won the trade. Cornelius spent it with an outstanding career. Spanning more than 50 years, trades have produced some of the biggest names in team history. Whether it was player for player, draft picks, or cash deals, national news or blips on the radar. Trades in the NFL can take on many different shapes and sizes, and each sculpted the franchise for years to come. These were the top 10 trades in Bill's history. Be sure to catch all three of this year's top 10 specials right here on MSG. The top 10 trades in Bill's history was presented by Aesthetic Associates. One great look is worth a thousand words.